Today, we are going to answer a question that I received at the agency. How do I determine my marketing budget? Well, I think I want to open up with a little fun. So we're going to play uh, our teaser in this episode. While we do that, why don't you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button there. Enjoy the promo. What's your budget? Budget. Budget. Money. Money. Money, money, money. Keep busting. It makes the world go round. I want money. I want money. Cheddar. Mr. White, fat stacks, fat presidents, cash money. Another day, another dollar. As you go out to bring home the bacon. I work all night, and I work all day. I've been working like a dog. When the morning hour, we are the day. Don't work in Money here, money there. It takes money to make money. Bet your bottom dollar. Bet your bottom dollar that's a good work. We're making money. Show me the money! But different people treat money in different ways. Join us for a discussion about businesses and money. feel about money on the next straight shot marketing podcast what's your budget welcome to straight shot marketing is everywhere it's around your life from what you eat to what you wear and where you go it is a vital part of any and all business. Let's discuss the world of marketing and business as it influences everyday life with the staff of Atlanta Marketing Agency, Reformation Productions, and guests as they give it to us straight. Get ready. Take aim. Steady. Welcome to Straight Shot. Hello, straight shooters. That's right. Today we are tackling the big question, the scary question, money. You know, that's interesting. How many people are scared to talk about money? Money, money, money. You know, it, it's a necessary part of owning a business. But, you know, you're you're right. It's, it's scary to folks. You know, I just did a sound off on my show. For those of you that might not know, I have a weekly little social media show called Marketing with the Misses that I put ding. on. Ding! <laughs> Marketing with the Misses. That I put on Reformation Productions Facebook and YouTube pages each Wednesday. Anyway, so last week I talked about this in a different way than we're going to talk about it today, but I'll bring it up just the same. I am a member of several small business Facebook groups. And every time I see a question on there that is asking for free or cheap logos, websites, it both confuses and angers me. People seem to understand that they need to invest in a good electrician or a plumber or a good mechanic that's going to work on their daughter's car. But for some reason, they think that marketing is an area that they can cut corners for their business. I don't get it. Well, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are just in denial or maybe they uh, are just uneducated in their understanding of just how important marketing business communications is to a business. Seriously, any business book or business course that you take 
or CEO that you interview is going to tell you that it is paramount that you market your business. It can make or break any company. Now, when you go to apply for a business loan, what are they going to ask you for? They're going to ask you for a marketing plan, a very detailed marketing plan, because it is so important to that business being success that they want to see that you have a a plan, a marketing plan for what you're going to do so they can make sure they get their money back. It's actually one of the uh, three legs of a successful business, right? I mean, do you guys remember the episode with uh, Benny Santa Romana from the SBDC? Uh, I do. Of course you do. (laughs) Uh, But today we're going to assume that you already know that, that you already know and understand that you have to invest in your business and that marketing is either the number one or the number two business discipline to do that depending on who you ask. Okay, well, what's the other one? Operations. Oh. That's where you work on the actual delivery of the product or service. Some uh, professors will call it uh, productions instead of operations, but it's it's the same thing. Uh, marketing is where you, you know, tell the world about your business, mm. why they should choose your business product or service in the marketplace, It's the art of creating influence in the marketplace. How are you going to interact with other people? How are you going to present yourself to the world in a way that will motivate them to then choose to do business with you? Well, yeah, both of those are pretty important. Yeah, and depending on the industry that you are engaged in, it can be, like I said, either number one or number two. But today... We are going to assume that we or someone in your history has made that lesson (laughs) that communication and communicating your business is of the utmost importance, absolutely clear. And if you don't know that, reach out to us and we are happy to talk to you about it. It's important as a business owner. And I agree, not understanding the importance is a factor, but I think there's more than that. Well, for whatever reason, and I agree, there are definitely more than one. Um, and statistically, because you know somebody studied this, it's a big enough problem that yeah. somebody studied this out. 50% of all small businesses don't even have a market plan. 50%? 50%, according, according to studies by you know the powers that be. And 86% of all of the respondents to the study really want to focus on things that aren't marketing. They want to do other business activities, right? Rather than looking at their communications or um, marketing duties that they have for their business. So I think preference and focus are more reasons, I suppose. And while I do agree that they should focus on their core business and then outsource their marketing to professionals, you cannot just simply ignore it. It's too important for you to just ignore how you're going to communicate your business. And when it comes to money, I think a lot of it has to do with them not understanding, and it's not what they do. They don't do marketing, right? So uh, beyond that, I think that when business owners are asked for their budget, they find it difficult to answer. Uh, And that's, I think, for a few reasons. If it's a small business, those can be very private numbers, right? And they're worried about judgment, judgment about how they make as much as they do or judgment about how they make as little as they do. Because a lot of small business centers don't see the difference between their personal money and their business's money. They're, you know, the business entity as itself, even though, you know, the the government makes us set it up as a completely separate person than yourself. Uh, It doesn't help. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of business owners still, you know, uh, they confuse the the monies and they become personally attached to uh, to what's going on with it. So it's very personal to them and they keep it very close to the vest and that it makes it uncomfortable to talk about money right now publicly traded businesses um it's all public record so there's less personal attachment to discussions of money because it's not really their money right uh there's there's attachment to you know 
being successful as a company and to growing your company, but not as much the actual individual numbers themselves. So that's one reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another reason would be, uh, and I'm going to kind of speak about this through the lens of a marketing executive because that's what I am. Because that's what you are. (laughs) Yes. Now, it's different in other industries uh, where people might ask you for a budget or something, but when you're talking about a marketing budget, another reason that it might be difficult is centered around fear. They have a fear of being taken advantage of. They think, well, if I tell them how much money I have, they're going to spend it all. And when it comes to marketing and your marketing budget, yes, sir, that's true. That's why you give them an Absolutely. And it shouldn't be scary. You should know that going in. As a marketing professional, it's my job to instruct you as to the best ways to spend your marketing budget in ways that will be most effective for the company's growth and success and the most efficient for the bottom line. And it's really hard for me to do that if we don't have the budget numbers. But you should know, when you tell me those numbers, I am going to do my best to figure out how to spend it all. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> uh, which is why it's important that you are absolutely honest with that number. Don't tell me a budget that you can't afford. No one will end up happy that way if you do that. But at the same time, the more you are able to spend, the more you will be able to do. Right? That budget is what fuels your activity. So the more budget you have, the more activity you will be able to do in the marketplace. So don't tell me a number that's too high that you can't afford it, but don't tell me a number that's too low either, or it's going to limit your options. So just be honest, which brings up my next thought on why people find it difficult to answer. Okay. Salesmen, sales people to be politically correct. Yes. Uh, People are very leery of salespeople. And that comes from a long history of commissioned salespeople that have led their prospects astray in order to make the percentages that were in their commission. Now, at an agency, we don't have hard costs that are marked up by commissions for the most part. We work very similar to the way that a law firm works. We work by the hour. The cost of our services is completely dependent on how much time it takes to accomplish the work for you, plus any hard costs that might be involved. But there is no commission. Our new business professionals will not chase you down looking to meet their commission. They are here to help you and to facilitate strategic consultation, creative, and success for your company. They serve not sell. Right. So if you buy a house, the salesperson gets a commission. If you buy an engagement ring, the salesperson gets a commission. If you buy a car, commission. But working with the agency, not commission. (laughs) Correct. Uh, The only difference is with uh, media buying. Media buying has a standard 15% commission that's been around for years and years, uh, and it's paid to the agency from the media, not from you, not from the client. So uh, it's really more like a referral fee, but they call it a commission. Uh, it, It would cost you, the business owner, the same either way. Uh, Now, some media uh, have tried to shortcut this uh, age-old way of uh, doing business with uh, agencies, Uh, but professionally, that's how it works. It is a commission that is paid from the media, not from the business owner, and uh, they kind of do that as a thank you for choosing my paper instead of my competitor's paper, Right. even though we don't do it for that reason. We would do it based on your readership. (laughs) Anyway. uh, Anyway. All right. So I have another reason that people are uncomfortable with giving out their budget. We run into this quite a bit. 
Uh, so just so folks kind of understand why they may be feeling this way. That's kind of why I'm, I'm going through this. So if you feel uncomfortable, you can kind of, these are the reasons that I've seen why you might be feeling uncomfortable. So don't be scared that you feel uncomfortable. But people, another reason, people in our society are used to having everything being a transaction-based um, sale, right? Everything is transaction-based. So it's, I give you this amount of money and you give me this item in return. And because of this conditioning, they look at how much does a bottle of ketchup cost instead of looking at how much does it cost to feed my family for the year, month, or week. But in reality, it's not about that bottle of ketchup. It's about the whole purpose of what you are trying to accomplish and what's best and the most efficient way to feed your family or in this case, your business. And I think it's largely because people don't know what all goes into that or, or not what not that they don't know. They, they know the individual pieces, but they don't think about it in this sort of big picture way. What all goes into feeding your family? What all would be part of that budget? It would be filling the pantry, eating out, snacks, celebratory meals and dinners and whatnot. Little Johnny's, you know, school lunches, um, your alcohol. Actually, that may go under entertainment. But uh, it's all about the big picture and planning. You don't just go to the grocery store and start pulling things into your cart, right? You have to know how much money you have, and that's going to help you to select what are your priorities and what's going to end up being in your cart. Marketing strategies are very much the same way. So you're not filling the entire cart full of Hostess sna snack cakes. You don't have it in your budget. I think that's a really great analogy. And you know I love me some analogies. So in light of that great analogy, let's first talk about that. What does go into a marketing budget? But before we do that, let's take a quick break to hear from some of our sponsors. Straight Shot is brought to you by Reformation Productions a full-service marketing agency in Atlanta, Georgia, helping companies promote and communicate their business in the most efficient and effective ways possible through straight-line marketing. Find out more by visiting reformationpro.com or call 678-825-8086. Reformation Productions. Think in straight lines. I was so nervous. I had never done anything like this before. It took courage, stamina. It was exactly what I've been dreaming of since I was a little girl. They were exactly what I was looking for. These aren't couples. They're business owners and customers talking about their journeys and business relationships. The study of relationship building has many parallels in both couples and business. Join B. Zachary Bennett in his new book, Married to Marketing, where he uses this comparison to walk through the process and commitment of owning a business and building relationships with customers and creating your story. Order Married to Marketing by B. Zachary Bennett today. Owning and running a business takes commitment. So much commitment, you are married to it. And in that marriage comes responsibilities. If you don't keep her happy, if you don't keep him happy, you won't be in business for long. I tried to make it a quick read for business people. There's a lot of great content, but it's not war and peace. Your business is a marriage of company and consumer. And in that commitment, you are married to marketing. Married to Marketing by B. Zachary Bennett is available on Amazon.com in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. Limited edition numbered and signed copies available on bzacharybennett.com or at Zachary Speaking Events. Order now. Welcome back, everybody. Before the break, Zachary had given us a great analogy about knowing 
what goes into feeding your family and setting that budget. So in light of that, we are going to pick up there and start by asking, what actually does go into a marketing budget? And before you set it, you need to know what goes in it, right? Not necessarily, but I will answer it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but it sounds easy, but it's a little more difficult than you might think for someone. Uh, because it's not a lens that many people look through a lot. But the answer is in the name. We are looking to figure out your marketing budget. Marketing. Now, marketing is a synonym for business communications, which is communicating your business. So the answer is anything that communicates your business. Okay. Well, that's true. I do think it seems a little inadequate, like it's maybe too broad. Okay. So let's let's break it down. Break it down. <laughs> what communicates your business? Well, okay. your brand. So things that are related to brand development and maintenance. Your okay. logo, right? So yes. logo design and updates, that sort of thing. Your website. So anything having to do with your digital presence online. Sponsorship, like, um, you know, little league, schools, organizations, events, expos. Uh, social media. Social media is, uh, so for that, we're talking about the creation and curation of content to post, maintenance, interacting uh, on the platform, all of that. Um, promo items and swag. Cups with your name on it. Yep. Pens, etc. T-shirts. Koozies. Um, <laughs> uh, any advertising. Well, I think that one's obvious, right? So radio spots, print ads, and uh, TV ads, theater yeah. advertising, billboards, postering, digital ads, pod- podcasts. Wink. <laughs> yeah, all of these are, you know, obvious because they are all examples of external marketing. Right. But there's also internal marketing. Now, okay. that's things like, you know, recruitment or employer brand development and help wanted ads, HR related items that uh, might include, you know, employee orientation videos, safety videos. Uh, safety posters, classes, things related to to training and passing on internal information like, you know, newsletters or intranets. Yeah, And, and, and you're right. These are things that people don't think about mostly. Other things would include, you know, investor reports and conferences, retreats, that sort of thing. Anything where the business is communicating internally to the employees, management, investors, Etc. Now, you used to work specifically within that niche, didn't you? I did. I worked for a marketing agency that was focused on HR-related and internal uh, marketing as their mm-hmm. niche. Uh, often, that's um, a thing. Yeah, often, um, you know, it has its own budget and falls underneath the uh, human resources HR director's control. But with smaller companies, it's all marketing budget, and it's all under the business owner or CEO's management directly. Mm -hmm. But there are also other areas that definitely seem to overlap with the other major disciplines, right? So operations and administrative in your three-legged stool. Right. so it kind of overlaps with them in in use, right? And that can be really confusing to some. And uh, I have a list because it's long. So there's things like, you know, employee uniforms, grocery or retail bags or boxes, whatnot, uh, office signage and decor. Okay. Delivery vehicles. Shipping boxes, invoices, and packing People slips. People never think about those. Nope. Uh, stationery, uh, the voice message that comes on your telephone system. Para the, Espanol, primo numero dos. <laughs> the signature at the bottom of company emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fonts that are used throughout everything that you do, whether it's electronic or print communications. right? The look and feel of your lobby, including the items that you have on display the furniture, the colors, right? Store layout and design, if that's relative to your business or restaurant. 
All of these things communicate something about your company to people. Mm-hmm. Even when, if you don't think about it. Absolutely. Well, a lot of people don't think about the, the, the one that, that is really most, I can think, off the wall with all this stuff as far as people thinking about what marketing is, is the atmosphere of your office. When somebody walks into your office, what is it telling them? Is it telling them that you're warm and cozy or that you're cold and calculated? It's telling them something. Are people right? too busy to look up yeah. and say hi? And and while we don't, you know, at a marketing agency, we're not going to make the furniture. We will, you know, advise companies on what they should have according to their brand. I will say that we make a lot of the artwork on the walls, That's though. That's true. That's true. Uh, but it comes into, uh, you know, the look and feel that is communicated. So all that stuff matters, right? The, the, that's why uh, for larger companies, small companies don't do this a lot, but larger companies, they will have an official font because that font, if you remember in the All About Logo Design where we talked about what fonts mean, that logo says something. And they want to make sure that all communications are consistent, and they all are saying the same thing, and that comes all the way down to conveying the same feelings yeah. permeate through the office um, space. And then, of course, the last little group of things that go in your marketing budget, not to be forgotten because they're the most important ones to me. Oh, are they? Are uh, consultation ah. and creative production. Oh, that's me. For putting it all together, right? So this comes from working with the marketing agency. It includes things like strategic development. Brand development, management, maintenance, and upkeep, uh, ongoing consultation, vendor research. Uh, a lot of people don't think about that. You know, uh, having a marketing agency, and if you have a marketing agency and you don't know this, um, they're going to hate me for telling you, but you can call them to research all kinds of things that oh, you yeah. may want to do that you don't have to actually do yourself. Research saves you, can be such a saves time you suck. a ton of time dealing with all these different vendors, trying to figure out the options and the best cost and all that sort of thing. Um, and then we have tool creation itself, obviously, right? And then media buying that I talked about and various other things that that agencies do. But so, so that's you know agency time specifically. All said things go into your marketing budget, and it's a lot. It is. It's it a, is. there's a lot of things. Uh, Regis McKenna says. Everything is marketing, and he's right. Everything that communicates to others is relative to the marketing function for that business. So are you starting to see why marketing is such a priority? Why it can't be overlooked? Because if you overlook it, you are overlooking a huge part of having a business. Uh, It's also very impactful, right? Proper use of marketing can influence people to choose to do business uh, even improper with you. use of marketing. That's true. Improper marketing <laughs> processes uh, and bad marketing can drive people away uh, and completely tank your business. Mm-hmm. But I think that understanding what all goes into a budget helps folks to understand its importance and why it's such a large percentage of running your business. Uh, and it is. It, it's a, it's it's not as big as operations from a, a cost perspective in most cases, uh, but it isn't small. And it shouldn't be small. It has a lot of responsibility when it comes to your company's success. Okay, so regarding setting that marketing budget, that magic number, I'll tell you the guidelines that you would learn in business school first. Okay, and then I'll kind of break down uh, how it's actually done. So the rule is... I don't know if that makes a drum sound. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the rule is 12 to 20% of your gross income should be dedicated to your marketing budget. Hmm, okay. Now, 8 to 12% of your gross income, if you are an established or legacy business that is simply maintaining instead of growing your business. So, 12, uh, 12 to 20% if you are looking to grow, right? If you ha- are have already made it, you don't feel like you want to grow your business anymore, then you can back it down to 8 to 12% of your gross income. But it's okay. but you make a valid point that this is not a one-time thing. Oh, no, no. This, this is, is every recurring, year. Right. recurring annual budget making. Yep. 
Uh, now, those are the general rules that have been passed down from Yale or Harvard or whoever. Some smart uh, guy pushing some numbers around. <laughs> uh, it's what everyone learns in business school. It may be based on the known success of Coca-Cola by their commitment to keeping a strict 20% marketing budget and then growing to be very, very successful using it. Um, And for the most part, it works great. But there are some businesses now that use different percentages. Dot-coms, for example, um, they have lower overhead and less staff, meaning that the operations budget, the operations percentages are lower and the marketing budgets are higher because they still have to communicate even though their operations are lower. So the percentages kind of get uh, get shift. A little wonky. Now we can put some examples of dot, com, dot coms up on the screen. I think we discussed some of them in the Building the Foundation episode of the small business startup series that we did. Yes, Startups should be spending 20 to 30% in a more aggressive strategy for at mm. least the first few years, particularly if they don't have their foundation built yet. That's a, a That's we, all that introductory. We probably work. talked about that back in that in that series, but yeah, there's a lot of things they need to do before they get to the the steady growth, the foundational have to stuff, right? Now 20 to 30%, that's oof. So, now some of these percentages can freak folks out. Yeah, but remember that more than 50% of your business is communication of who you are, communication of what you have to offer, communication of why someone would choose you or your business in the marketplace, communication and presentation of the products, all the services that you provide. So ipso facto, communication is a large part of owning a business. It's true. It's true. And uh, and it's not like you just said 50% of the business. Now the budget is not 50%. So yeah, you're, you're, doing, you're doing well. Yeah, anything less than that's great. <laughs> and can we just pause for a minute? I use ipso facto correctly in a sentence. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I just needed to throw that out there. <laughs> well. uh, anyway, all of that is true. But just the same, people will run from that percentage. I've seen it. I have seen several backup tactics and methods over the years. One is when a business owner tells me what they need insistently, if I have led them uh, on, a, on a different direction or a, a varied direction of some sort. Usually this is because they are thinking that I have increased things somewhere unnecessarily or because they're trying to oversimplify what it takes to accomplish what they need. Both are the wrong mindset though. You see, businesses contract me to tell them what they need, to see what they can do within a certain budget. But if they try to tell me what they need, it often comes out of fear or they are trying to, you know, negotiate. Uh, I'm very clear. Uh, We are not a vendor or retail store where you can just come in and buy stuff. Uh, our ser- our services are partner focused. We work with our clients to ensure that they are successful. We don't simply, you know, take orders uh, like a store. Would you want fries with that? Uh, but at the same time, businesses do, and and fairly often, they will come to me with something that they are interested in or want to consider for communicating their business. But when they do that, it is often for other reasons. Yeah, like they've seen our work and know that we can do a good job for them creatively or tactically, depending on the solution. Or they are trying to promote and grow their business and they are suggesting a good place to start. Yes. Right. Uh, in which case, I will take that information with very high regard because it came from the client and then make prioritized recommendations that will fit into their budget. Now, I'm okay with either of of these, but out of respect for the business community and honoring my position within the industry, I always do my due diligence in providing guidance and advice in addition to great creative. So you see, it's just me doing my job. I'm not, you know, 
marking things up. Like I said, we're not commission. I'm not giving you add-ons. I'm simply doing my job and providing you with whatever it is that I think you need in order to get where you're going to go. Now, I'll also tell you if you don't need something. If, if you come in here telling me that you want to use QR codes, I am likely going to tell you no. <laughs> Unless you have to have your menu on a QR code on the table right now. <laughs> that's true. That's true. QR with codes con- have made a little yeah, comeback, made, haven't they? Made a comeback with, with the corona. Well, all that's awesome stuff. You know, good, good for you. Nice looking out for the clients and all. But, you know, just to stay on topic, how does that tie in with budget? Well, when... When people don't want to or refuse to provide me with their budget, it makes my job very difficult. You see, they there are some things that business owners need to understand about what it's like to be on this side of the table, right? You, Mr. Business Owner, will never do all the marketing. There are simply too many strategic options and too many tools that are available for you to do all of them. You can't do everything, right? And that budget is necessary to define the room that I'm going to work in. With that budget, I have parameters that can then narrow down all of those options that are out there. And then I could select what is best, most effective, most efficient in the business's unique situation. And all businesses are indeed unique. Budgets aren't about uh, determining profit. They are about setting boundaries. But to understand that, you have to trust your marketing consultant. Because, like I said, nothing is off the shelf. Every strategy, every tool is designed specifically to the client's brand, goals, and needs to work specifically for them and their targeted customers. So you can't just go into a store and look at how things are priced because those things don't exist yet because they're made specifically for you. And so that that brings in a, a trust issue because people are used to comparison buying. Okay, so how do you show that you are a trustworthy person to a prospective client? Well, uh, I am trustworthy. It is in my making, and I hope that other people can see it. Okay, yes, I can see it. But how do you show it? (laughs) Well, I share with them my knowledge, experience, my understanding regarding uh, how marketing works strategically. Um, I guess I try to showcase my character and the value that is working with me. But, you know, in the end, in the end, trust has to be given. It's like forgiveness. You can prove yourself to be trustworthy, but you can't earn trust. Okay, that that got that deep. Got deep. <laughs> uh, that could be a, a, a whole nother philosophical discussion. Jeez Louise. Okay, well... Assuming you have their trust, and in reality, I guess they have to trust someone in order to gain the expertise, dedicated skills, and experience necessary for this type of work in order to grow their business in the most effective and efficient way without wasting time or money. But either way, you or whomever they decide to trust, how do they determine their marketing budget? That was the question presented to us that started this whole deeper conversation on marketing budgets. So how do they determine their budget? Um, Well, you know, your accountant should be able to tell you what your gross income is. So you can then use that business 101 percentage formula that I gave you. But uh, though those are the most accepted formulas, there are several other methodologies and formulas that are used to help business owners and department heads in determining what their budgets are. But rather than go through all of that math with you here, uh, what what I'll tell you is that we have several uh, calculators on our agency website. So uh, just go to reformationproductions.com slash budget. We will put a link to them on straightshot.net too. Um, But there are three different calculators that are there, each using a different 
methodology or formula that is commonly used for companies in determining what their marketing budgets should be. I love me some online calculators. Oh, do you? They, yes, they make life so much easier. <laughs> um, we have one that is uh, age and income based, right? It takes into account how long you have been in business uh, with your uh, attitude, your disposition, and your desire towards growth. So whatever your disposition desire is towards growth and, of course, your gross revenue. So that's the first one that we have on there. Um, that is very similar to uh, the you know business 101 methodology that I told you. Uh, and it's using the, um, the age of your business and your, um, also your, your uh, attitude towards growth in that factor as well. So that calculator is there. That's the first one, I believe, on the page. Um, number two, we have one that is goal-based. Okay. okay. So it is an alternate method that requires a little bit more data in order to be able to, to use it. It requires things like knowing... Uh, your revenue goals, your uh, value per conversion, right? What is that rate? Uh, your industry conversion rates, uh, your cost per lead, things like that. So it's Some a little more, that one. yeah, it's a little more complicated as far as um, doing it. Uh, but if you've been in business for a while, uh, someone in your business, whether it's, you know, sales, the, the CEO yourself, you may know it, or uh, your accounting department, somebody can help you figure out what all of those things are. Uh, and if you can't, refer to model number one. Or you can refer to number three, which is? Yes, number three is a range computation model, Ooh. which means... Uh, sexy sounding. Yes, it's, it's sexier sounding than it actually is. Uh, uh, it, it takes into account your profit margins, hard costs, the uh, cost of occupancy, that's your mortgage or your, your rent, and an effort to provide you with a high and a low end to your budget range. So it won't give you a specific number, this calculator won't, but it because it's made to give you a range. So it'll say that you know, you're somewhere between here and here. And that's that's kind of what that one is for. That one sounds nice. I like that one. <laughs> I mean that one just seems like it would be the most comfortable for me. Well personally. well that's because it's not specific. But if you're looking for a specific number, um, the other two are I like are a better. range. I like a range. I like uh, a little flexibility. Wishy-washy. Not, not, no, no. <laughs> I like having a high end and a low end, and then I can feel comfortable about landing somewhere in the middle. True. I guess in some ways, as a business owner, it would make me feel like I have a little more control. I think it really depends on how far apart those numbers are. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Because depending on how you do the calculator, if you have a number, you know, that's, Ten thousand dollars, and then another number that's a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. that's that's too big of a range. Yeah, that's too big. So uh, I don't think it'll give you numbers that far apart. But uh, you know, it's it's as long as you're comfortable, you're going to fall somewhere in between here and here. Then you should be good. So why do you have so many different uh, calculators out and options out there? Well, uh, because people like choice, yeah. and they have preferences. Um, you know, I don't really care where your budget comes from. I don't, you can pull out a finger if you want I don't, to. I don't even care how much it is, but I need it in order to develop a strategy for you as a business. Help us help you. Right. <laughs> it keeps me from wasting time with options that you can't afford and from not providing enough for your business when you could have afforded to do more. Now... I can tell you when your budget is too low because I'm I'm pretty familiar with yeah, what that it's looks not realistic. like. Uh, but even in those cases, you know, maybe you're just starting out and you're having some some difficulty, I still want to help you. But in those cases, it's simply going to take you longer to accomplish the things that you may need to accomplish in order to truly thrive in the marketplace. But Something is always better than doing nothing. And doing some homework is better than just going out there blind and making a mess of all of your possibilities. So I try to work within any budget whenever possible. We can always do something to get you into a, 
a better position than you were in. Now, um, regarding the calculators, you know, none of these budgets are perfect, but right. all of them give you a starting point. And then as your business grows more successful, you can begin to increase your annual budgets to expand your options and the reach for your brand. That's one of the reasons why these formulas are percentage based so that as you grow your company, that budget grows uh, as well. Like you were saying, um, it's not a one time thing. You have to revisit this every business cycle. It may not be every year, but Mm -hmm. however often if you, you know, your business cycle lasts 12 months, 18 months, you know, nine months, whatever that business cycle is, you have to look at whatever the budget's going to be for that business cycle. Okay. So there you go. Lots of talk about budget and money today. Always an uncomfortable conversation, folks. <laughs> so all that being said, Zachary, what is today's straight shot? Um, well, I don't think it has to be uncomfortable. So so let's let's start there. It doesn't need to be uncomfortable, but it needs to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to be honest with your agency about what you can and cannot afford. We'll do our part of delivering everything that we can within that budget and you do your part, Mr. Business Owner, to honor that and keep your payments up to fuel that budget. Deal? Sounds like a deal to me. Now, other than that, straight shot wise, to the point that you made at the beginning of the show. Guys. <laughs> oh, oh, we're getting serious. Know the value of what you are buying and stop insulting creatives and marketing professionals. You wouldn't expect Steve Spielberg, Steven Spielberg. Did you just call him Steve? I did. Are you boys? Yeah. (laughs) You wouldn't expect Steven Spielberg to come to your home and shoot your home movies for free, right? (laughs) Because he's a professional at his craft and you value what he does. The same as you want people to value whatever it is that you do, right? Now, that being said, let me tell you exactly what it is that you are paying for. What went into that marketing professionals being able to do this as a career, right? They have invested years of training and developing the necessary skills to provide you with what you need in as good as quality as possible in a quick time frame, as quick as possible, and with as much care as possible. So you are getting quality, speed, and heart. You're also getting their experiences. They've seen what works and what doesn't work. They've made their mistakes. They've seen more of the available options and the alternatives than someone that doesn't do this professionally. And that experience is very, very valuable. And you know experience is valuable, don't you? Because you don't want the captain of the airplane that you are on to be inexperienced or green. You want to have an experienced captain, right? Less likely to damage something that's important, like you or your children, or in this case, your business. Now, you have options. You don't have to work with them. And they don't have to work with you. Nope. But isn't it nice when everyone works together for the same goal and businesses really start to soar? That is so harmonious. Yes. I like it. People working together, one common goal. That's nice. I'm going to end it there because I like ending on a positive note. So, guys, you have the tools that have been provided to determine your budget if you need to. Now you understand what, because the unspoken rule is if, you know, we don't look good unless you look good. So everybody's working toward you being the best you can. Did you just quote Vidal Sassoon? If you don't look good, we don't look good. Yes. We don't look good unless you look good. Is that right? Okay. That's like an 80s thing, right? I'm just playing. I'm playing. Okay. (laughs) But anyway, okay. So you guys see the tools we've provided 
to help you determine your budget if you need to. And you also understand that it's important that you provide those, right? Now, the other thing that is important is that you like this podcast episode. Like wherever you are, do a review, hit subscribe, smash that notifications bell. More good conversations like this coming up on our next episode and always. If you'd like to suggest a topic or if you have a question for us, shoot us an email at info at straightshot.net or call us on the telephone at 678-825-8086 extension 300. But seriously, like us on social media. Subscribe wherever you enjoy your podcasts or on YouTube because it really helps us out. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. Until next time, bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. If you found this podcast informative, we hope you'll pass along our web address, straightshot.net, to your friends, colleagues, and business associates. And please leave us a positive review on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash straightshot.net.